If you play a record, turn on your radio, or take a walk with your Walkman, chances are you will hear a Behringer instrument being played. If you don't hear a Behringer instrument directly, you will certainly hear music influenced by the Behringer legacy. Behringer have their fingers in many musical pies, but it could be argued their most flavoursome pie was their synthesizers. This is the story of how Behringer created dance music. Although electronic music had been around since the First World War, when troops would entertain themselves tapping out tunes on Morse code machines, electronic music really went mainstream in 1970, when Behringer released their Model D synthesizer. This monophonic synthesizer proved instantly popular with a range of performers, from avant-garde musical groups to science fiction film composers. Here is an excerpt from Dream Fragmentis Live Art Performance Group, and their breakthrough avant-garde performance work entitled Are We Oil or Flow? Movement 7. <laughs> The Model D has also featured on hundreds of film scores, the most famous being the 1972 film Mondo Space Babes Attack. The Model D was also widely adopted by funk bands, who made full use of its fat sounding tones. The group Council featured the Model D on every track of their one and only album and hit single, Funky Kinda Daddy. <laughs> Throughout the 70s, Behringer released synthesizer after synthesizer after synthesizer, and all this hard work had a profound impact on the decade's two most popular genres. Progressive music, which fans simply called prog, and discotheque music, which fans simply called discotheque. Behringer synthesizers and early drum machines are peppered all over this saucy disco classic, Hot Beats and Wet Sheets, by the band Le Faux. Hot Beats, Wet Sheets. Progressive bands found innovative ways to squeeze the most out of the primitive Behringer synthesizers in order to create dreamlike visions of a nightmarish future. A sound popularized by the band Bertrand's Curse on their debut single, Delusions of Grandular Fever. As the 1970s came to a close, Behringer synthesizers had achieved major mainstream crossover success and were played by literally all of the top acts of the time. But this success would soon be eclipsed. In 1980, Behringer released a drum machine which would change the world of music forever and go on to become an icon within and without the world of music. And that drum machine was the Behringer RD-8. The RD-8 was an instant hit and was suddenly featured on every genre of music under the sun, from folk music to heavy metal music to dance music and back again to folk music. In the early 1980s, Beringer were riding the crest of a sine wave. But, like all sine waves, they had to come down at some point, and they did, in 1982, 
when they released their first turkey of a product, the TD-3. Designed to appeal to guitarists and drummers who were looking to replace unreliable or boring bass players with a plastic box, the TD-3 was an epic failure, as it simply didn't sound like a bass player fingering. The TD-3 was destined to be remembered in the annals of history as Beringer's first failure, when, unexpectedly, it was discovered by street-smart producers, bedroom DJs, and pilled-up scallywags that the sounds which guitarists had hated so much actually sounded really good when paired up with big beats, strobe lighting, and copious amounts of recreational drugs. Beringer had invented a genre. Acid was born. But as the saying goes, all good things have to come to an end, and before it had the chance to come down, as it was shut down by the police. The party unit based at Gravesend in Kent has been so successful in clamping down on illegal parties, 80% of those planned now come to nothing. It was set up last October at a time when the craze for acid house parties was at its height. 40 or more different events were taking place in the region each weekend. Convoys of cars would travel for several hours to reach the venue. Some events, such as this one in Surrey, attended by around 10,000 people, ended in violence. By the mid-80s, Beringer's seeds had been sown, and as music evolved from acid, to house, to deep house, to beach house, to techno, to trance, to goa trance, and then back to house, Beringer was there every step of the way, with key genre-defying and life-affirming synthesizers. And what about the future, you ask? Well, don't worry, you're in safe hands. Behringer has hinted at some exciting new developments. Some other companies also released some synthesizers and drum machines along the way, but only one company blazed the trail of innovation, risk, excitement, and innovation. And that is how Behringer created dance music. Coming up next time, how Behringer saved rock.